Oh my gosh, so you see I use screen cord, so um I think I'm gonna try you guys are gonna see it. But my friend had asked me to get to a game theory thing or well you know what I'm saying, bro. Keeps game theory. Or fan theory, so what I'm going to do is find a short one from food. Because I can't go over 15 minutes. There we go, we're going to do this one. Here you go, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Oh, and uh, can I get some extra ketchup? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Unfortunately, we're out. Try Taco Bell. They're always weirdly eager to give sauce packets away. Oh, great. Did someone say sauce packets? No. How many do you want? Oh, doesn't matter. Here's a hundred. A thousand. <laughs> Ow. Ah, stop. stop it. Leave me alone, Taco Bell. Oh, I know what'll cheer you up. That's hilarious. <laughs> No! 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 Curse you, Taco Bell! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's been hitting the bottle a bit more than usual this pandemic. Friends, there has been no shortage of shortages this past year. The toilet paper shortage was rough, but we rolled with it. The mask shortage was difficult, but we put on a brave face. Then came the flour shortage, and ultimately, we rose above. But if you thought COVID was done screwing up our supply chains, best brace yourself because the worst one yet is upon us. Theorists, this month's headlines have been screaming it for all to hear. We've got our Ourselves a ketchup shortage. Over reactions. Now, this shortage isn't going to be felt at, say, the grocery store. Take it from us, who just finished taking the inventory of an entire grocery store for a recent episode. There is plenty of ketchup available on your store shelves. Enough to provide you with calories to survive 68.7 days, in fact. No, it's actually the restaurants who are feeling the squeeze from this particular ketchup shortage. See, as we've discussed in some other recent food theory episodes, the pandemic has fundamentally changed the restaurant industry here in the U.S. COVID guidelines have led to a huge uptick in drive through takeout, and delivery app orders. And that means ketchup packets are suddenly in high demand. Yes, that's true. A lot of you guys are saying. You know, the ketchup. George, still. After all, what's the alternative? It's not as though restaurants can send every drive through customer home with their very own ketchup bottle or give a few pumps of ketchup into each outgoing bag. No, customers need a portable ketchup source that won't make a mess, which means that they need the ketchup packet. Or I suppose the dip and squeeze packets like they give out at Chick-fil-A, which are objectively incredible and need to catch on. And it's not just that fast food restaurants are suddenly handing out more ketchup packets than usual. It's that sit-down restaurants and bars that have always gotten by with ketchup bottles are now also reliant on packets because A, they now have more takeout orders than ever, and B, for sanitation reasons, bottles that have everyone's grubby little hands on them are no longer a viable option. I mean, I was squicked out about those things before I thought that they would cause me lung disease, but now, pff, screw that noise. The result, ketchup packet demand in the US is up 300%. So really, we're not dealing with a ketchup shortage so much as- Can you see this number? It's on the thumbs up for a new day. It's not really a ketchup shortage, it's ketchup packet source. So is there a bottle on the cover? Like, really? We're dealing with a ketchup packet shortage, which admittedly oh, okay. makes for a less punchy headline. But it doesn't make today's ketchup episode any less spicy. Because here's the other detail that a lot of headlines are leaving out, theorists. This isn't some industry-wide shortage that's caught every ketchup supplier by surprise. It's really just Heinz, the industry leader who's unable to keep up with the demand. And this is a huge deal. In case you didn't know, Heinz is a dynasty in the ketchup business. A dynasty that has, over the past few decades, been making a lot of big mistakes. And it's this latest series that might just be enough to topple their reign. Are they talking about like any Heinz guys? Because we don't really eat Heinz here. 
Do I? I think I do. I'm not sure. I suppose you could say that this is a golden opportunity for Heinz's competitors to catch up. Ha <laughs> ha! History is repeating itself right now before our very eyes, and Heinz should be genuinely terrified about what comes next. But to understand why this is happening and how things might change, we have to start at the beginning. Before Heinz grew into the worldwide ketchup dynasty that it is today, founder Henry J. Heinz got his start with a different condiment, horseradish. However, this venture didn't exactly work out. In 1875, the market found itself oversaturated with horseradish for some reason. In turn, that drove the price down and Heinz into bankruptcy. He was able to bounce back though the following year with his 57 varieties of food products, which included the now famous Heinz tomato ketchup. By the way, that whole 57 varieties that's synonymous with the brand isn't even true. Heinz already had offered more than 60 different products by the time the slogan had been introduced. Apparently, they just liked the number as a catchy marketing gimmick, thinking that the number seven got people to think of the lucky number seven. Oh, another fun fact here. According to Heinz, if you need to get ketchup out of a glass Heinz tomato ketchup bottle, the absolute best location is to hit on the number 57. I've never tested it if it works. Maybe it's a food theory for another day. The more you know. Now, although the company didn't invent ketchup, tomato ketchup is actually derived from a centuries-old Chinese pickled fish sauce, Heinz is responsible for pretty much every major ketchup-related innovation that is true, guys. Since this Heinz's awesome. brand of the stuff made its 1876 debut, the company invented the ketchup packet in 1967. They even yeah. invented the K spelling of the word ketchup. Yeah, back in the 1880s, the standard way of spelling it was catsup. But then Heinz decided to spell it more f Guys, this is the video right now. It's honestly kind of like, what am I watching right now? It like doesn't make any sense. I mean, all we're doing is watching this. Also, if you guys ever seen me like spawning with a different game, I used screen record to do these awesome videos for you guys. Um, but you can only um, screen record with you know your um, games. So I do these reactions always open Among Us. Okay, doesn't mean I'm playing Among Us. Phonetically, in order to make their product stand out against the competition, and it you worked. In fact, it worked so you get that? Yes. Oh well, that nowadays even the competitors Subscribe. start the Heinz way. I mean, just look at that Google trend spread. It is a blowout, folks. Even I mean, if you don't like, comment, share, and subscribe. Like, what's, what are you guys even doing? Miriam Webster's dictionary describes catsup as the quote less common spelling of ketchup. That is cold, Miriam Webster. I mean, that's like saying the British version of the office is the lesser watched version of the American office. The point is, Heinz is the name in ketchup. They have an 80% market share in Europe and 60% in the US, which is why their relationship with McDonald's is an important one to pay attention to. You see, McDonald's is the name in fries. They are, after all, the best selling fast fast food item of all time. And as such, they're a huge customer when it comes to buying ketchup. So it was only natural when these two companies struck up a business relationship. By 1973, 90% of McDonald's ketchup and pickles were being supplied by Heinz. But that year, everything changed when Heinz found itself ill-prepared for, you guessed it, a ketchup shortage. When a poor tomato harvest led to less ketchup production, Heinz prioritized their glass bottle customers instead of their fast food accounts. And when McDonald's realized that Heinz wasn't willing to go the extra mile for him, they bit back and hard. As the king of fast food, McDonald's is a demanding mistress. And if you don't treat her right, she's gonna find another man to provide her with sauce. I, I don't know, this analogy went way off base. Anyway, while McDonald's didn't completely break up with Heinz, they did find new ketchup suppliers for practically all... Introducing 48 square oh, centimeters of 2% cash back earning potential. This is the card built for... Real life. The new Wells Fargo Active Cash Visa credit card. That's real life ready all of their U.S. restaurants. In fact, the incident led a Heinz executive to joke that written somewhere in the McDonald's training manual, there's the following phrase, never sell Heinz. And thus, McDonald's came to serve the fancy ketchup that most of us know today. Now, quick note about fancy ketchup. Because those words appear prominently on McDonald's ketchup packets, some people mistakenly believe that fancy is a McDonald's brand name, but actually, it's a legal classification for grade A ketchup, the highest grade of ketchup given by the USDA. That's right, here in the U.S. the term fan. That's awesome, you guys. But do we really care? <laughs>
C is synonymous with grade A, as seen on the label of this other type of ketchup, Members Mark. Now, Heinz ketchup is also certified grade A and could brand itself fancy, but they choose not to. Seems they're letting the competition have the word fancy to themselves. The point is, McDonald's ketchup and Heinz ketchup are of equal quality, at least as far as the USDA is concerned. Anyway, for 40 years, anything that wasn't fancy at McDonald's was Heinz, but even that limited arrangement would come to a crashing end in 2013, when Bernardo Hayes, the former CEO of Burger King became the new CEO of Heinz. Now, the decision to cut ties with Heinz wasn't some petty move by McDonald's. It had some very good reasons to be wary of this guy. For one thing, it's not as though Bernardo cut ties with Burger King when he took the Heinz job. Despite stepping down as Burger King CEO, he retained his seat on the Burger King board of directors. Furthermore, Hess was also a partner at 3G Capital, an investment firm with ownership in Heinz and controlling interest over Burger King. So basically, McDonald's really had no choice but to dump Heinz or else they were going to be doing business with the enemy in a very concrete way, which is why McDonald's broke up with Heinz for good in 2013, taking their restaurants in Pittsburgh, Minneapolis, and the rest of the world with them. Now, this is why I say history is repeating itself, theorists. Heinz reacted too slowly and too casually to the 1973 ketchup shortage, and they ultimately lost McDonald's as a result. Now, here we are in 2021, and it looks like the ketchup shortage might be costing them even more of their fast food customers. Texas Roadhouse and Long John Silvers are two chains that have already been forced to seek out new ketchup suppliers. Wendy's also stopped serving Heinz ketchup in recent years. And it's not just the big chains either. According to the owner of Denver's Blake Street Tavern, quote, it's gotten so bad that when I go to McDonald's or Wendy's, I'll hoard extra packets to bring back to Blake Street. And what really surprises me about this whole thing is that it was avoidable. All Heinz had to do was learn from 1973 and take their clients, these massive fast food brands, seriously. But so far, they haven't done that. Heinz knew about the increased demand for ketchup packets at least nine months before the shortages hit, yet they dragged their feet and got caught flat-footed, just like they did in the 70s. And their response to the shortage this time around feels lackluster at best. The demand for ketchup packets is up 300%, yet Heinz plans to boost packet production by just 25%. And while they say they're developing, quote, future-focused culinary and packaging innovations like a no-touch ketchup dispenser, it does nothing to solve the real issue, drive through and takeout. And based on all the research that's available, it looks like that problem is gonna be here to stay. It's almost as though Heinz, the inventor of the ketchup packet, still doesn't appreciate the importance of its own creation. And soon, that very creation could be Heinz's demise. Okay, admittedly, I'm being a bit overdramatic about the whole demise thing. The fact is, Heinz will be more or less fine in the short term, no matter how this whole ketchup packet shortage fiasco shakes out. After all, they're a massive and diversified company that raked in $26 billion in revenue in 2020. Condiment sales accounted for only about a quarter of that. See, these days, Heinz, or more accurately, Kraft Heinz, does business in a whole lot of different product categories. They own brands like Oreida Potatoes, Planters Nuts, Jell-O, Maxwell House Coffee, Velveeta Cheese, Oscar Mayer, Kool-Aid, the list goes on. And while ketchup may be Heinz's most iconic product, ketchup packets kind of seem like, well, kind of like small Oreida potatoes, all things considered. But the fact of the matter is that the ketchup market is suddenly up for grabs for pretty much the first time in history. I mean, let's face it, ketchup isn't a particularly difficult product to make. We're not talking about cutting edge technology here, we're talking about mixing tomatoes, vinegar, and some seasoning. That's not to say there isn't an art to making great ketchup, but McDonald's managed to source a generic ketchup that's good enough for their customers, so did Wendy's. Ever since the ketchup pack packet shortage hit, the internet's been swamped with Heinz copycat recipes. The point is, ketchup is a bit too easy to produce for Heinz to sit back and ride this all out. The demand for ketchup packets is real. If I'm in the drive-thru and my options are A, generic brand ketchup, or B, no ketchup at all, I am taking that generic packet every single time. Don't get me wrong, I love the taste of Heinz as much as the next person, but my brand loyalty has its limits, especially when Heinz's response to this whole thing has been a resounding meh. So get on your horses, all you lesser-known ketchup brands, cause it is the Wild West right now. Hunts, this could be your year. McDonald's, if you want to expand your already ridiculously diversified business into the ketchup space, you could really stick it to Burger King in a whole new way. But whoever's left wearing the ketchup crown when the dust settles, take this one thing to heart. Please make more dip and squeeze packets. Those things are the best. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Theorists, if you're surprised by how many brands craft hunt. There goes go. There was the episode. Fourteen minutes. Have a good day. I'm gonna say nothing. I kind of just want to just go to fifteen seconds.